Hey, welcome back to DC Sound Up. Today we're talking about input delay. So why is input delay such an important tool? More now than ever before, we're doing shows with vast amounts of multimedia, digital content being played back from sources like computers. So say we're playing content back from a computer, we're using something like QLab or Playback Pro, and we're sending that from the computer out to our switcher scaler as one of the inputs on that switcher. And then we're going to process it however we need. There may be, you know, depending on the show, it could be any number of different things going on there, picture in picture, or actually scaling it, format conversions, it all depends on the day of the week and what we're doing. And then we're sending it from there down any number of different options, whether it's a direct cable path, whether it's an extended cable path or a wireless link, uh, we're, we're sending that video out to a device, a, a, a destination that could be something like a television or a projector, an LED wall. All those steps along the way have the ability to introduce latency. As the video gets processed, scaled, and, and sent through that chain, there's a chance that it's gonna pick up a little bit of latency. By the time you get the image on screen, your audio is out of sync. So you need to take the audio that matches that video and specifically delay the audio to let the video catch up. This is something you can't do on the master left right mix. So a very popular mixing board in the last 10 years of Yamaha LS9 does not have input delay. So if you're in a broadcast environment, you're stuck with only a few effects racks where you can put a delay in and make this work. So input delay is really, really important. So without the ability to line up the audio with the video, you're constantly gonna have lip sync problems viewing the screen in a live situation. We'll often use a test track like this to sync up our sources and their destinations in a live environment. It's important to check for lip sync with every different source when you're mixing a live event because at the end of the day if they throw a video up on screen during the event and the lip sync is way out it's gonna sound and look like the audio is off. Just from experience people are gonna complain about the audio. There are absolutely other uses for input delay in live sound environments things like theatrical uh, miking. Anytime you need to line up a, a physical distance between two microphones, uh, whether that's on stage in a recording or broadcast environment. People do that with drum kits and all manner of other microphones. And a quick internet search will turn up loads of stuff to read about that subject. So input delay is a really important thing to be thinking about when you're dealing with video and multimedia content on your events. Uh, there's nothing worse than having a corporate job where everything looks great and then it's completely amateur hour when you look at the, the screens and everything's uh, out of sync. It really does just look awful. I know personally when I'm watching something at home, uh, once in a while Netflix or YouTube, the sync will get out and it just drives me nuts, it ruins it. It's once you see it, you can't unsee it. So in a live event where we have the opportunity to fix that or in a broadcast environment where we're the ones responsible for putting that out over the air uh, you absolutely got to pay attention and sync those sources thanks for watching like subscribe leave a comment down below let me know how you use input delay i'd love to learn more from you about how you use input delay on your digital mixing console thanks for watching see you next time